Today on This Week Health. So you're talking millions of medication SIGs that needed discrete elements, discrete places where clinicians could see that, and pull that and leverage that data. All right, here we are from Chicago, HIMSS 2023, and we're going to do a solution showcase. We've been doing interviews and action, but solution showcase. Kat, thank you for being a part of it. Kat Hasanovic yes. with Baptist Health out of Jacksonville. Yes. And you're sitting in for Stacy, who is not here. So last minute fill in. <laughs> last minute fill in. Um, but you know, this is a, this is a solution that you are very familiar with, that you were a part of bringing in. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Doctor First, and I, I think the best place always to start with these is what's the problem you were trying to solve? Sure, sure. So at Baptist Health, we recently went live with a new EHR system, a system-wide EHR system. Where we consolidated multiple EHRs. Oh, you did? Yeah, you did that big yes, epic Yes, we had a big, epic, big bang implementation. And so one of our problems was that we have, of course, six hospitals, um, including a children's hospital. We have three freestanding emergency departments, as well as an outpatient oncology clinic, Baptist MD Anderson. And so, and of course, over 200 points of care. That's for a beautiful our building, by the way. Yes, we love Baptist I'm sorry, Anderson. I keep going on tangents no, here. No, no, but... this is perfect. No. All right. So you had. So we had to consolidate. Yeah. Was our issue, and so. Therefore, how, we, how many EHRs are you consolidating from? Oh gosh, a plethora. Because you have to remember, we have over 200 points of care. That includes outpatient primary care offices. It includes our MD Anderson, all of our hospitals. So multiple points of contact, and they were all on disparate, different EHR systems. Now we had our main EHR, which at the time was Cerner, but of course we had all of these multiple points of entries where everyone had a different EHR. And so the issue that we were having was consolidation of medications. So, you know, if you're a patient and you're being seen at one of these points of entries and the EHRs don't talk, so now you're, you're relying on the patient being the historian. And then you're also relying on clinicians to manually transcribe this information, which could lead to error, which, you know, that's a big patient safety dissatisfier. So we needed something to clean that data for us, to give us some tangible data so that way our clinicians had something that they trusted and they knew this information is correct. Yeah, when we're doing these migrations, we're a lot of times we talk about the PAMI data. Yes. And the M is medication. Medication. And bringing that medication data together is a challenge. Talk a little bit about that challenge. I mean, yes. because it's it's not all input the same. It's not no. all. You know, no. So. And then you have to think about free text, right? So so there may be free text information that needs to be cleaned. And so we leveraged Dr. First and their artificial intelligence solution to do that for us. And so you're talking millions of medication SIGs that needed discrete elements, discrete places where clinicians can see that, and pull that and leverage that data. So this is, it's interesting as a solution, I'm thinking if you're doing a big EHR implementation, it makes sense. If you're doing a M&A, it probably makes sense as well. Anytime you're moving that data and have to normalize that data. Yes. So you identified a problem. Talk mm -hmm. about the process of examining solutions, looking at different solutions, and how you evaluated solutions at Baptist. So we collaborated with you know key stakeholders. So we input is important. You know people have to trust what we're doing, and so and to do that, you bring your folks to the table and and you discuss it. And you know Dr. Johnston, you know she's very well known, very resourceful. And I think she looked at a couple of other vendors and Dr. First just met the need. It's interesting because when you're talking medications, like we were just trying to put our medications in the portal. And every time we went to a different physician group to say, hey, here's what it looks like, they'd say, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do right. that. So there was probably a lot of oversight on this uh, and a lot of testing on this specific project. Absolutely. So this had to include multiple application team members, multiple stakeholders. You have to test, you have to validate, and you have to be sure because at the end of the day, there's a patient at the end of that data. Another important yeah. aspect also is not only for the clinicians and physicians to have access to that data in real time, all consolidated, it's also the patient. Because when we moved to Epic, that gave the patient in their hand from any web browser, 
to be able to see their history, their medication data. So you have to remember, they didn't have that before because we had our main EHR that our inpatient hospitals were utilizing and then we had our different EHRs at our different locations, our outpatient locations. And so as a patient, you didn't have that one source of truth. And now we do. And thanks to Dr. First, we have that one source of truth that our patients can also leverage. Did, did that create a huge med rec? Absolutely, absolutely. And we still have some challenges today, right? Because, you know, it's there's not always perfect. challenges. There's with always med rec. challenges today. But, you know, med rec across the industry is a challenging for all health systems. I would welcome if there's a health system that has it down pat. Please see me if <laughs> no, they have it down pat. No, but I'm picturing you have these silos of medications, these different EHRs, yes. and then you go to bring them together. How do you handle the, the discrepancies between them? Well, that's what we count on Dr. First for. That is, That was a part of the solution, is to make sure that they gathered all the data, especially the pretext elements, and, and making sure that every point of care, every medication SIG, every full SIG was consolidated. And our medication techs and our, our nurses and our physicians, they trust that data. And they know that we we have implemented, you know, one top of the line. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's important for people to realize is, as we're doing this med rec, we're not throwing away, oh, this is the data, and we're throwing this other stuff away. We're always keeping that lineage of the data. Yes. So we can go back and, and you know, because we still, as much as we're talking about AI here, right? we still want the nurse and the clinician and, and you know whoever the primary care doctor to look at it and have a conversation. Oh, absolutely. I am a nurse by trade. And so I completely understand the importance of making sure that you validate, validate, validate. It's not just relying on the computer. It's also having that conversation with your patient and, and leveraging that information. Alex's Lemonade Stand was started by my daughter, Alex, in her front yard. By the time she was four, she knew there was more that could be done. And she told us she was going to have a lemonade stand. And she wanted to give the money to her doctor so they could help kids like her. It was cute, right? She's going to cure cancer with a lemonade stand. Like only a four-year-old would think that. But from day one, it just exceeded anything we could have imagined because people responded so generously to her. We are working to give back and are excited to partner with Alex's Lemonade Stand this year. Having a child with cancer is one of the most painful and difficult situations a family can face. At Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation, they understand the personal side of the diagnosis, the resources needed, and the impact that funded research can have for better treatments and more cures. You can get more information about them at alexslemonade.org. We are asking you to join us. You can hit our website. There's a banner at the top and it says Alex's Lemonade Stand there. You can click on that and give money directly to the Lemonade Stand itself. Now, back to the show. So talk to me about the implementation. I mean, was this just part of a massive other project that was going on? And what did it take to stand up Dr. First and, and what are the initial steps look like? Well, we knew that going in that we were going to have a challenge, right? Because we're consolidating we are moving to one single platform. So we knew we were gonna have a, a challenge, challenge amongst, amongst, challenge, amongst challenges. many challenges. Right, and so as we were implementing Epic, we knew that we had to have a solution. We knew something had to be done. And so it was kind of a project within a project, right? And so we started our implementation with Epic back in the fall of 2020. And as we started building and as we started looking at those legacy workflows, because remember, we had to look at legacy workflows from different aspects, different points of entry. And so that took, a, it's a team of people. And it also took collaboration with our clinicians and with our stakeholders, because like I said previously, you have to have buy-in from them. You cannot just implement without having buy-in from your stakeholders. They have to know and be at the table and trust the information and trust the process. And to do that, you have to partner with them. And that's what we did. So as you were testing, was it nurses and clinicians doing the testing? Nursing, nurses, MAs, we have medication technicians, we have, pharmacists. we have pharmacists, we have doctors, everyone. It's everyone at the table. Everyone who has a stake in the game, everyone who could do medication reconciliation. So, big bang. Big bang. So, you said it was six and a children's hospital? Well, 
let me tell you our story. <laughs> so Baptist Health, of course, we have six hospitals now. And the beginning of the project, we had five hospitals. So we had five hospitals and four three standing emergency departments. And so having a big bang epic go live, that just wasn't good enough for us. And so six months after our big bang go live system wide with epic, and this is acute care and outpatient. Okay. And primary care and ambulatory clinics and our cancer center. So your entire so medical, that. all your our, medical groups, every, the entire thing. Everything. And six Which, months if later. you're going to do it, you might as well. Might as well do it. And six months later, we opened a new hospital. And so we. we like, like from the ground, like from it the builds? ground up. We had four freestanding emergency departments. And so we went live with Epic in July. And in December, we decided that we were going to open up Baptist Clay, which started as a freestanding emergency department. The construction was ready. December came and we said, you know what? Let's just do it. Merry Christmas, Jacksonville. Here's your new <laughs> hospital. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas, team. <laughs> it was uh, great. It was great. It was the right thing to do for the community. Yeah, it's uh, so talk to me now. So the Big Bang, which is which is pretty amazing. So it all goes into place now, typically when you do a, an EHR implementation of that scale, mm -hmm. the first couple of months are a challenge. Sure. Now the nice thing for you guys is, you're not early adopters by any stretch. And so you had a lot of help. I mean, there I, I know a Baptist out of Kentucky sent some people down to work with your team. I mean, you guys had a lot, Epic now has a community of people that sort of swarms yes. around and helps. But what, what are some of the challenges you found uh, specifically around the medications and the migration like post go live i think post go live some of the challenges were the fact that this is new to everyone right right so it's new work you moved at, moved all the cheese moved all the cheese new workflows for everyone and also remember not every partner that we work with is under the baptist umbrella and so when you have different practices that are governed by different bodies that becomes a challenge but communication is the key and buy-in is the key. Right. Definitely the key. It's a, the each our implementations always comes down to a, a handful of things. I mean, we can get the build pretty close now, but the education. Yes. And you know, and some people are like, how hard can it be? I, you know, I don't need to go Very. to the trade. <laughs> <laughs> but the education and then the customization yes. of the environment. And, and every time we do these, or I've been a part of these, it's the doctors who are the last to customize are the loudest until you go, do you realize you could do this? And they go, oh, well, that's a lot easier. Absolutely. Yes, it is. And then you have to remember that there are other epic shops in Jacksonville. And so you have those right, you have practicing others. clinicians who work at other health systems in town. And so they think that they know epic because they already utilize it somewhere else. But they have to realize that the build, the workflows. Epic. This yeah. is our epic, right? It's really interesting. Yeah. Talk about steady state. So, oh my gosh, you're three or four months past your go live. So you're <laughs> steady state now. What is the what is the doctor first implementation? I mean, does it take a lot of maintenance and a lot of oversight, or is it just sort of running in the background? It's running in the background. And so I think, you know, with Doctor First, we have a great partnership with them. And so we're constantly collaborating with them on other projects. And so it's running in the background, it's doing what it does. And we just have to monitor, validate, monitor, make sure that things are what we call high and tight in the nursing world. You know, make sure everything's high and tight and just keep that constant line of communication and we're in that partnership. And I, I think the last question, talk about, we have a lot of pharmacy partners in the community. How does Dr. First either you know, assist or help with, with the communication and the flow of the medications out to those partners? Sure. So remember, we had to convert millions of medication sinks, right? So you may have a patient that's on, you know, a certain medication, you know, certain 30, you know, BID for 30 days, you know, 60 pills or what have you. You have to remember, because now we're all leveraged, we're on the same platform and Dr. Dr. First has helped us to clean that data our pharmacy partners out in the community, now they are only working with the one EHR system. The one system is electronically prescribing and sending to those different pharmacies. So Walgreens now knows Baptist Health has leveraged, we're on Epic now. So now they don't have prescriptions coming from them from Baptist Health from all scripts perhaps, because that was one of the EHR vendors in our primary care offices. So now everyone is comfortable and satisfied with the fact that this patient information has been 
convert, it's been converted, it's been measured, it's been leveraged, and it's one source of truth now. And it's trusted. Fantastic. Pat, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care. I love the chance to have these conversations. I think if I were a CIO today, I would have every team member listen to a show like this one. I believe it's conference level value every week. If you want to support This Week Health, tell someone about our channels. That would really benefit us. We have a mission of getting our content into as many hands as possible. And if you're listening to it, hopefully you find value. And if you could tell somebody else about it, it helps us to achieve our mission. We have two channels. We have the conference channel, which you're listening to, and This Week Health Newsroom. Check them out today. You can find them wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Google, Overcast. You get the picture. We are everywhere. We want to thank our keynote partners, CDW, Rubrik, Sectra, and Trellix, who invest in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.